This is a training about using Docker and technologies behind it efficiently. It is about building, testing, deploying services, monitoring them inside a cluster, using schedulers, uh, applying continuous deployment or continuous delivery and many other things. But before we begin, it is probably a good idea to have a very short introduction. My name is Viktor Parsik. I'm one of the employees of a company called CloudBees. We are a company behind Jenkins and a huge supporters and lovers of Docker. We think it really works well together. At the same time, I am one of the Docker captains, which is a group of people who are big contributors recognized by Docker itself. People who help a lot community, project, speak at conferences, write blue blogs and so on and so forth. There is no clear distinction between us except that we are all focused on different areas and contribute greatly to the project. I also authored a couple of books. Java Test Driven Development is not necessarily something that you might be very interested in, but the DevOps School Toolkit 2.0, 2.1, 2.2 might be books that you can use to extend your knowledge, to extend what you will learn through this training. This training assumes that certain prerequisites are met, specifically that you have certain applications installed on your laptop. You can use Macintosh or Windows or Linux. It will work on any of them, but you do need to have Docker for any of those operating systems. Docker Compose, Docker Machine, Git, JQ and Git Bash in case you're using Windows. Because with Git Bash, you will have exactly the same terminal as other operating systems like macOS and Linux. So now for Docker, there are installation instructions for almost any operating system known to man. So if you're using Windows or macOS, when you install Docker, you will get as part of the bundle, uh, not only Docker, but Docker Compose and Docker Machine. We will use all three of those applications. On the other hand, if you're using Linux, then you will need to install those three applications separately. If you go to docs.docker.com slash manuals, you will find instructions for your operating system. Next, you will need Git. Most likely you already have Git, almost everybody does. But if you don't, please go to git-scm.com and install it. In case you're a Windows user, please make sure that during the setup, you check the box that says check out as is. Otherwise, you will not be able to follow the tutorial because some of the scripts that you will download will be changed from Windows current returns and might fail. But as long as the checkbox you checked and you're a Windows user, you should be just fine. Next is JQ. It is on address stedalon.github.io slash JQ. It is a very small and very specific tool that allows us to format JSON outputs. And with that, we're we'll able to see JSON generated through some commands in a much better formatted way. Before we move into hands-on part of this training, I'm going to give you a very brief overview of what Docker is. You probably already know because Docker is, everybody talks about it, many people are using it, it's really huge. But just in case that you're not well informed, I'm going to explain why we want to use Docker. And there are quite a few reasons. One of them is that it is very portable. We can run a Docker container almost anywhere and almost anything can be inside it. That does not mean that you should put anything, certain architectural choices that are better fit for containers than others. Or right. if your application is, let's say, cloud native, then it's probably going to work better inside of a container than if it's very old application written maybe 10 years ago. But no matter what works better, what works worse, the point is that you can put almost anything inside of a container and you can run it anywhere. Now, when I say anywhere on macOS and Linux, you can run any Linux container. On Windows, you can run both Linux and Windows containers. And on Windows Server, you can run all in Windows containers. So there is a certain division that you cannot literally run anything anywhere. But as long as you ignore the divide between Windows and Linux, that promise is more or less fulfilled. Another important differentiator is that Docker is very low on restless usage. If you would pack an, a service inside of a container, as opposed to a service, a standalone, the only service on a virtual machine, we, we have infinitely better restless usage. You can probably pack on a physical hardware three times more containers than VMs. 
That does not exclude VMs from usage, we still need them, but we don't use them anymore as a way to distribute applications. We use containers now and later on when we move into schedulers and clusters, you will see how that extends you know, further. Docker is very scalable. We can, within a second, or maybe a couple of seconds, if it's a very big application, we can scale it to as many replicas as we want. And scaling is very important because today we are not living anymore in 1999, we are living in 2017, or maybe in 2018 if you're latecomer to this training. Anyways, scaling is one of the most important things because sooner or later you will hit more users, you will have bigger traffic and you will have to scale. And even if you don't hit more users or have more traffic, scaling is essential practice if you want to have fault tolerance, if you want to have zero downtime services and so on and so forth. So it's not only about performance, it's about providing the right service to our users. Next, Docker provides isolation of processes, which is not the same as isolation of resources. It does not provide the same isolation as, as VMs, which can separate CPUs and assign them to specific VMs. Docker cannot do that, but it can isolate resources. That means that we can run any application inside of a server without worrying that its processes will clash with something else. And we can use any technology we want and so on and so forth because every container lives in its own world even though it shares resources with other containers on a host. Next, containers are self-sufficient. That means that we do not expect any special requirements for infrastructure. You will not need to use configuration management tools unless you choose to to set up things simply because your servers will not need anything except Docker engine. And maybe in some cases, a network driver. And that's about it. That's all we need from configuration management point of view. As long as Docker engine is running, we can run any service, any application just by executing Docker command or Docker stack command and so on and so forth. And finally, something very dear to me is that Docker containers are immutable. That means that they're gonna behave exactly the same no matter whether it is running on my laptop, on a testing environment, staging environment, production, and anywhere else. That is very important, especially if you're trying to implement continuous deployment, because we can finally have reliable processes. We can be almost certain that whatever we tested, for example, on a laptop or on a staging environment will be exactly the same as what is deployed to production. And that will give us much higher level of confidence, allow us to move much faster than we would normally do. So in this section, we'll take a look at Docker Hub, what it is, why do we like it, why do we use it. We will see also how we can operate containers, what are the basic commands we can use with containers. And later on, we're going to explore Docker Compose. And now we are going to manage some Docker images. We are going to learn how to build them and how and where to store them.